All right, uh, welcome to the second edition of Infrastructure SIG. Um, I have posted uh, in the chat a link to the uh, HackMD that I was tracking using last time for notes. Um, I have updated it to reflect uh, today's agenda um, and updated the bottom of it to indicate what has been completed so far. <clears throat> um, in the future, I will uh, try and update that sooner and send it out in case uh, folks would like have other updates they would like to add or if they would like to add anything, uh, new business topics ahead of time. Um, feel free to uh, add anything within the new business agenda if there are infrastructure topics um, that we are had not previously discussed um, or had come up um, since our last uh, meeting. Um, since our last meeting, we did, uh, if I um, can actually, that point, moment when you realize you think you're sharing, but you're not, and nobody knows what you're looking at. All right, now, um, <clears throat> so uh, I'll just hop first down to the bottom, which is uh, completed tasks um, to review. Uh, so we did create a subtopic infrastructure in the development section on discourse. Um, there have been uh, some discussions there, some updates in relaying information, um, and the uh, notes from last time we're also posted there. Uh, <clears throat> scheduled the next meeting, done, because here we are. Um, I am planning now to actually make this, um, set this up with Melanie to make it a routine thing rather than uh, me forgetting and being like, oh yeah, it's been about a month, we should do this again. Um, and <clears throat> we did start posting some uh, posts for initiatives that had started updates <clears throat> ongoing. So uh, moving back up to the top, uh, next item of business is what is the state of the initiatives that we had stated last time um, that we were uh, working on. Um, so <clears throat> uh, first topic there is web server migration. So I'm gonna find, oh, we didn't actually have an item there. Um, Maybe I ought to put that. It's part of the workspace migration. Oh, right. Good, thank you. Okay, so um, I guess I'll turn it over to Evgeny to give us the latest on the web server migration. All right, thank you. Um, so we had like this old PR from Evald and myself open that was part of the migration because it was um, around restructuring the web server not to use the root for all the YAM tasks, which was one of the blockers that we had for, for the migration, essentially. Um, I had that tested on the new machine, and because syncing content from the old machine to the new machine and having different permissions would be um, rather painful, I had merged that already and deployed the new um, low permission user to uh, to the old machine. That seems to work fine so far after a few fixes. And um, I have also prepared the DNS for the migration, so the details are down to something like five minutes or so. And um, I also tested that rsync and everything works on the new machine too. So the next step would be actually doing a, another sync and um, switch over. So fix Debian has happened, happened, set up rsync has happened, and set up website is also fine. So final sync and switch open perfectly.
Um, what does that, how much time does that entail? Is that a, 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 a sizable outage that we need to plan? Um, the outage itself should be rather small, especially as parts of the stuff are fronted by the CDN anyways. So um, I'm not looking at more than maybe 10 minutes of user visible outage on the website, essentially. And that's what probably the, the most user visible part will be. Um, the buffer shouldn't be website shouldn't be really be offline because you can still continue serving the old website. It's a static website. There's nothing changing. So correct. As, yeah. long, as long as we keep WebO2 running while WebO one is being migrated to, um, yeah. that's not a problem. problem. The yeah. only thing is we probably sh we shouldn't do website of this during that window and probably also no Yum and uh deep package updates. Those are fine because those deploy to both machines anyways. Tec so technically fine, famous last words, right? Um, target date, um, good question. I'd point at next Monday. So what is it? The 28th. At least Monday is a public holiday for Czech Republic, so I won't be online. That's. that's I guess not blocking. I mean, yeah. So, worst case, kind of without review and uh, Tomer could be there and yeah. No, public holiday is on to well. it for Monday. <laughs> Well, you should know Monday. that. <laughs> we can also do, do Tuesday, but I'd prefer Monday to not to be too close to, to the snap on Wednesday. So I have actually my head clean for, for working. It's actually good because it means that fewer people will make changes on Monday. True. Uh, you'll, like have, you'll be the only one walking in here basically Monday morning. Uh, which gets to my question, which is, do you want to target doing it your your morning, EMEA morning, or do you want to do yeah. it when EST is I'll woke up? i do my morning, and um, I'll just not break stuff. Perfect. That's, I mean, that should be the way it is every time, Kitty. All right, any final, any other words on a uh, web server migration? All right, moving on. Next oh, up actually, is... I do have one word in the web server migration. I've been manually collecting the RSS stats on it. So just uh, dumping uh, from the web logs into my user folder, so please make sure to... I will okay, not then. destroy the machine immediately, so um, yeah. But I guess we should say my automated somehow, so it's not on your user. Yeah, it's just uh, Greg needed the stats for the um, some talk, so I just grabbed the yeah. uh, logs um, uh, for the community survey, and then I have a reminder every three weeks to just grab the latest logs and. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. For the month, yeah, we can definitely okay. look into automating that on the new server. Uh, that does remind me that you know, uh, part of migrating is shutting down the old thing so it stops yeah. spending money. Yeah. Um, Shut down, I would do probably Tuesday, and destroy a week later or so. October fifth. Um, yeah. And um, can you add to final sync copy over to Home Dear so then it's preserved? Yeah. 
Perfect. Okay. Any other things with the web server for real? All right, moving on. Um, next up was the uh, doc centralization uh, and migration. Um, I believe we have merged uh, one uh, PR. Um, I don't have a link here. There is a link on uh, discourse for all of the docs. Um, my last update there was uh, we had had multiple rounds, uh, and I was looking to see if there were any final critical issues or if we could uh, get approvals um, and merge the PRs that are out there so that they are uh, in the repo, the source of truth, and we can make updates from there onward. So consider this a call to action uh, to do that, please. Um, and if there are any other concerns or docs that folks feel like should be migrated or should not be migrated, uh, please raise them. Um, the other aspect of that is I am planning to, once each of those is merged, to remove the wiki pages from Redmine uh, so that we are not, uh, you know, having them still, the old ones hanging around or any confusion for anybody that maybe used to know about them. Maybe you want to just point it to the new location rather than completely removing it, but that's a small detail. Um, I can do that if folks would prefer for a period of time. Then one day down the road when we clean up Redmine again, we, yeah, we can come back through and clean it up. Yeah, history tells us that doesn't happen. We still have some manual pages that are still from years ago. That's, this is now a part of manual. Oh, that's okay. Uh, redirects are good. You have to kill it at some point. When I was in there this time looking for infrastructure stuff, I found a few that were I made an executive decision to get rid of because they were either completely wrong or they were just blank. All right. Um, any other... Questions, thoughts, desires around the docs migration? Great. So please review, please approve or comment um, so that we can get that finalized. Um, the next one we had targeted for the period between infrastructure SIGs was uh, infra cleanup and moving of the CI directory uh, you would you had taken ownership of this, but I don't believe any we did got any work done on it. No, I haven't managed to find time for it. Okay. Um, so I'm gonna still leave it as a desired uh, initiative um, for us to look into. Um. There was one thing that's sort of related to it. Um, let's see. I was looking into the how you can trigger jobs in Jenkins, and um, currently we have at least two ways. We have the old flow style uh, jobs, which are quite complicated, and we want to get rid of them. Then there's also the pipeline version, and we are slowly migrating to that, and they are much more usable for the end user. But there's also a third way that we haven't looked at yet, and that is um, you can also use Jenkins files inside of repositories. And the benefit of that is that you actually give the control into the repository. So it's similar to the Travis.yaml or GitHub Actions. Um, the actual configuration of the jobs is inside of the repositories. And that gives flexibility. Uh, currently, one complaint we see from the users is we cannot really test change. We cannot really. Mm, um, modify the job. Uh, we don't know uh, what happens when we change it. 
Um, and it can, if the job definition is inside of the repository itself, they can make a PR and iterate on that. Um, I opened um, a thread on Discourse. I will link it in chat. Um, and that is at least something that um, we should look at. Um, you can make shared libraries to avoid repetition. So you can make something like clone foreman or something that any job can call and they will just get, uh, get clone foreman. Um, one challenge that we would have is currently the jobs are in uh, uh, in a case repository. We track them, we do them via code reviews and they're quite closely guarded. That means we aren't that strict with our secrets, um, which historically has been not great. Um, if we implement this, users get um, if a PR can also do things that you would not trust. So that is something we need to look into. Um, you you can tie secrets to certain nodes and um, some jobs to other nodes, but I don't know how well we can actually really isolate those things. Um, so that's definitely a thing of concern. So I don't know if everyone read it and uh, where I have some other thoughts on if you want to do this or not. Um, I'm generally in favor of doing it. I think part of the reason people have been moving to Travis and GitHub Actions is because um, there's very few people who understand how the Jenkins job builders work. And um, if we can empower the developers to have some sort of um, Jenkins file, uh, ideally that would be very minimal, something like plug in PR test and give what uh, form and version it should be tested against or something very minimal like that. That would be much easier for them to actually use Jenkins integration and not uh, GitHub Actions or Travis um, and then we'll be able to also benefit from having the same setup for everyone instead of everyone making their own actions up, um, duplicating the effort for every repo. So I'm not familiar with the format of the Jenkins files itself and how much, uh, how minimal they can get, but if it could be a list of enable these um, templates for the, this repo with these parameters, that would be really awesome, I think. The power of them comes with how much you write the shared library, how much you encapsulate into function, functions that can then be called like sort of DSL looking methods. Um, I think we have some of that that would translate already because we created that when we, you know, built pipelines. As we built pipelines, we created common functions that, you know, we wanted to reuse. Um, uh, there will always be a split, but you, I, pro I, I would think that once you have the job definition created, you really never have to touch it. But that, the the that there is a job, I think. Uh, still has some degree of a minor amount, but it's still some amount of configuration that needs to exist in form and infra. But then the idea is, from my understanding, all the power is then given over, of execution is given over to the Jenkins file. Um, yeah, I'm saying that we should have for the like default use cases that are very repetitive, like run Robocop on this, um, that on PRs, uh, whatever, we should make that really, really easy to implement. Otherwise, people won't do it. Yeah, I, to deal with the secrets, I've been thinking about spinning up another Jenkins instance um, to sort of experiment with this. And we would have no secrets in that, and maybe just one or two simple builders. Um, and that would allow to experiment with this, try it out on the form core, try it out on, on the plugin and see how it looks like. And 
if we don't end up using it, we can just use a new Jenkins node, Jenkins uh, master, as the one we want to migrate to. And so, if everyone agrees that this at least something we want to try, um, once I have time, I will play around with it. At least with GitHub and Travis, if you have secrets, they are not exposed to jobs that are run from PRs. So maybe this is also something that we could do with Jenkins files. Not sure if Jenkins supported, but I would guess that's not a problem that we are the only ones who um, are affected by. The one problem is that we don't use the proper Jenkins secrets everywhere. Um, for example, in our Koji um, setup, I think that is deployed by Puppet and not by Jenkins itself. So it's in predictable location and it's quite easy to abuse that. Um, Technically, that's already a problem today, and it's quite easy to abuse if people know what they're doing. Um, so that would also be a good opportunity to sort of improve on that. I gather this is something uh, we would like to give a give a try to. Um, like you said that there's secrets, there's moving to shared library that has to be done and figured out, mostly just, I think, is a new mechanism more than a it being um, hard. Um, uh, and I just said, I think uh, it looks, sounds like there's some playing around and some trying out and also just some where do we want to prioritize this in the list of things that we are currently trying to achieve within the infra. OK, so what I will do, I can't promise when, but what my plan is then to spin up a Jenkins monster on uh, Oregon State University infra, uh, play with it, see how it behaves. Uh, and if we don't like it, or if we do like it, whatever, um, we can end up here. If we don't like it, we can end up using that Jenkins as the migration target, move over all the current jobs. And if we do like it, we can figure out how to do progress from there. Um, so, what would be what would be the timeline for that? Because I feel I think we have a shorter window to get Jenkins migrated than potentially to have a elongated pl pl like uh, experimentation. Um. Right now, I'm quite hesitant with giving promises because I'm quite busy with other things. So maybe, uh, maybe you're right that we, it's safer to just migrate and treat it as a separate project. Yeah, so I think we we could still spin up a separate Jenkins to play with, um, but I wouldn't want to hold up that migration because um, that was going to be the next topic was completing the Rackspace migration. Um, any other current comments around Jenkins files and the tactic there? Um, okay. Uh, I guess I will put it on here and then we can move over to it, uh, back to it. So, uh, I'll give the first new business topic. It's day in the sun, which is archiving old Debian releases. All right, so um, I posted about this on the Infra Discourse already. And um, my main uh, problem right now with, with Debian is we use Freight, or Freight, I'm not sure how it's pronounced, 
which is essentially a huge shell script for building Debian archives. And it works fine, but it rescans the whole archive we have on every run. The whole archive means we have things back to, I think, Foreman 1.2 or so back in there. And I honestly don't think that anybody is still running 1.2 and if they are, they probably don't need the Debian packages anymore that much. So my idea would be to define a date and on set date say that we are archiving everything up to my my thinking was 2.0 because 2.0 was like the, the new shiny thing. Um, and it's already the late, the oldest release we support today. And, Not for and that would mean that we are having far less resources that are required for normal operations. We would still uh, expose uh, the old archive on a different VO, something like Debian or Deb Archives, the Foreman org or something, so people can still use it. Um, yeah, we would just need to update documentation to tell people to look in the archive if they're running an outdated release. I think that was Evout's main concern with my proposal. Yes, exactly. Is there some way to have the CDN um, map different paths to different servers? So for the user, it would still be the same place, but it behind the scenes to be posted on a different server somehow or something like that. It's so, possible, but uh, it would require us to write essentially own mapping rules, which is supported, but I don't really want to. Would moving it to just a different path on the same server work, and then you would just need a little mapping rule like that? Mm. The, the problem is that um, with RPM process, the benefit is that you have just a single directory that contains everything. But with Debian archives, it's more connected and um, it's not a simple matter of here's one, but 24, here's two or though. Um, so that right. pulling things apart, and that's why it has to rescan the whole archive all the time that tries to find packages it already had in all the releases. Um, so that's uh, why you can simply do it. And I think that if you get to the point where you move things around, well, then you might as well move it to a different VOs because that is free for us anyway. Okay. And I think the instructions for the end user would be change your sources file to point to uh, that archive or whatever it will be, and then run app to update and uh, app to upgrade? No. Something like that, yes. Plus, I wouldn't do this on essentially every release. So when 2.3 comes out, I wouldn't also archive 2.0. But maybe something like once a year or so, move everything older than the last X releases or so. Um, how will you handle plugins? The are they also versions by release? Yeah. I don't remember on Debian. They are also yeah. by release. They are not by Debian release, but only by Foreman release, but also. Yeah. So. Would that archive live on the web server? Yeah, I see no reason to, for it not to. And any objections to archiving up to 2.0? Uh, OK. Um, Maybe we'll, once it's done, we should also post it in the release announcements. Um, sure, yeah. Just so people are aware of it. Give it a bit more visibility. 
it's before you, you can build out the archive site ahead of time, right? And it's just a matter of essentially given that everything up to 2.0 is not to be touched anyways, I can build the archive site already and it wouldn't even consume more storage, I think, because I can just hard link the data. Okay. I'll play around with it, but it should be rather, rather easily done. Yeah, please keep notes so we can do the same again next time. Yeah, of course. Yeah. By the way, what's the impact of that going to be? Will Debian builds take less than a year now to finish running? Say again. I'm just wondering about the impact if that means we can actually release Debian's without waiting for the sun to die its uh, natural or something. Well, that's one of my drivers here. <laughs> Yeah, once we drop ARM and once we uh, drop part of the old archive, it will be a lot quicker. Awesome. Oh, by the way, speaking of ARM build, no, sorry, Debian builds, um, we should probably figure out some way to automate um, builds when we merge stuff into the Debian repos um, and not acquire manual work for that. Thank you. Um, I'm just going to put it in the agenda here, but I'm going to switch back to Rackspace migration and come back if we have time. For the um, archive data, I think. 2.3 GA makes sense, since that means 2.0 is officially unsupported already. So that would be in about three weeks, two and a half weeks. I think I would still keep two at our normal mirrors, so you sort of have one dot X yeah. is on. Yeah, the I keep, yeah, keep 2.0, I'm just saying, do the archiving once 2.3 is out. You are going to go back to Rackspace Hub. All right. Uh, <laughs> so we got uh, two other machines to get out of Rackspace, uh, Jenkins and the Foreman slash Puppet server. Um, I think in previous discussions, we have laid out like a, sort of how the how. We haven't really laid it out here. Uh, and I think. We should also pick the order that we would like to do these in. Um, if anybody has a strong leaning towards which one we do first. If not, I can My just- My only fix thought it. is, uh, um, doesn't really matter for the order, but Jenkins outage will be affecting a lot more people than foreign outage. So we should try to plan that for time when it's less needed. True, but Jenkins is also probably easier to move. Um, let's let's do a quick exercise on. Uh, I don't know. Real quick, an exercise on what what that process would look like for migrating Jenkins. Uh, I know Evgeny and he would have both told me this like four times already, but give me give it to me again. The short summary is: you create a new machine, you add it to Foreman, you assign the uh, Red Host group, you let pop the run, and 
And then Puppet is not very good at installing all the plugins. So it does some manual action, does some configuration, but you can probably just sync over the whole slash parse slip slash Jenkins. And that's probably enough. And then you do some DNS updates. That's the top of my head. Yeah, am I missing anything? Um, if you sync over Valor Jenkins, that includes secrets, right? Yes, that should have all the database things that it has. Okay, yeah. and then, then that should be all. Expecting that uh, EL7 and EL8 Jenkins database is compatible, which it probably is. Uh, do you guys think we need to do more than just run a, a test job or two on the new machine once we have it up and running? I'm not sure how much we would actually need to test. I think maybe verify that all of the users and secrets were properly migrated just to make sure we don't need to. We do that. Yeah, what I also expect is once you sync over the database and start a new server, it will probably connect to all the nodes. And that might be sort of all that. If two Jenkins monsters try to manage the same nodes, that might be something. Fair so point. maybe once you do. Um, take the nodes offline from the new Jenkins and then move one node over, uh, take it offline from the old one online and the new one and turn one on the job. Mark them all as maintenance and then. Yeah, what you probably want to do is mark everything in maintenance on the old Jenkins, sync over for the Jenkins. Yeah, good answer. So there. Try that on me again. I got lost. So first, you um, mark all the nodes in as maintenance mode in uh, the old Jenkins. Then you turn the Jenkins off, rsync over all the files, and then you can turn it on again. Turn it on again, the old Jenkins. I think technically you can turn uh, both on, the old and new. Just not the same. Here I'm some echo. So what we're saying is there will we will have to take a little bit of maintenance time when we want to sync over because we gotta take all the nodes out of commission for a period of time. Yeah, in my experience, Fridays are usually very quiet, so that's probably a good day to do such a thing with minimal impact. Uh, um, I think out of maintenance mode um, would need to be after we've tested the new Jenkins, right? Because otherwise um, we have to start talking to the same node. The question is to how long of a period do we want? Uh, for a short maintenance window, you can take, uh, you can spin up the old Jenkins again except one node and only add it to the new one and verify it, or you can go just 
all the way to try it out on the new Jenkins, never spin up the old one again. Um, depending on how, you, how long your maintenance window is, either one can work. I think doing it one at a time makes sense, then the maintenance window would also be shorter because we wouldn't need to take them all offline other than for the initial thing to sync. And then once the new one is up, we can move them one at a time without an outage. Yeah, we also need to update all the... Well, maybe we need to update the Jenkins jobs in, uh, or the webhooks in GitHub. I think they refer to ci.theformat.org. Um, so that probably is just the init update, but that's something we need to verify. Sorry, what might need a DNS update? I think it, um, ideally speaking, we should never refer to the internal host names and we should always refer to ci.theformal.org and GitHub should all, all be set up correctly, but you never know and it might be wrong somewhere. Um, but yeah. Um, also, uh, probably something you want to note, before the switch over date, uh, you want to lower the TTLs from the DNS so the migration window is shorter. Uh, is that something we would do like right at the top here? Or well, usually what you do is, um, let's say you have a one day TTL on your DNS, then at more than one day before you change the TTL to like five minutes. So when you do switch it over, Caches don't live that long. Um, and generally you do it not too long before, it, but um, as you do it too, soon enough. So yeah, a day or two before a target date is good. While we're doing it, I think we probably want to rename the main Jenkins uh, from master to something else. Do they, don't they still call it master upstream? Not sure. Where do we even name? or use that name. I don't know, but it shows up on the dashboard. We only use master on the host name of the actual machine. It's currently, I think it's called master02.theformal.org, or maybe .org, um, and that's the only place we use it. And then ci.theformal.org uh, links to it. It's also on the uh, on executor list, it's listed as master. Um, so let's take the host name question. Oh, I see what you're saying. Okay. Uh, when we move it to OSU, should we, uh, maybe we talked about this before, but we should probably name it like Jenkins dot. Uh, Jenkins O2. Or O3, actually, well, O3 now. I would still say Master is a good name for it. If you name Jenkins, it's ambiguous again. And personally, I see no problem with it. Does the current host name have the word Jenkins in it, though? No. That's more, that's kind of what I'm getting at a bit is we don't, if you saw that host name, you'd be like, uh, Master of what? The universe? Uh, yeah, but we already in the new nodes, they're called node01.jenkins, uh, both the location dot the form of org. Um, so if you call master 03jenkins dot osusl dot the form of org, it will be clear what it is. Doesn't Jenkins have terminologies for this that they're moving to? 
Um, yes, they actually had a post just a couple of months ago. Um, At least the installing uh, bookstore well, refers to, yeah, the, at least the installing bookstore refers to, um, or simply Jenkins Master. So, they say controller. You know, I feel like it's fair to say that if they're planning to move to that, we could avoid have you know having to come back and try and make updates if by just accepting that that's going to be the new terminology and doing it while we're doing this migration. Yeah. So I actually have a few notes that are still named slave, but uh, one has been offline for a year and the others are hopefully going away soon. Uh, so we, or do we need it? I forget uh, what you guys have said before. There's some, oh yeah, we are. Let me just finish, wrap this up and then we can be done. Uh, do we need the number in it? I always get lost in when we put numbers in things. Yes, the number is good because if you need to replace it, you can just spin up a new node uh, called uh, Control O2 and then uh, move on the, move on to see That's the name we can just so be O S U O S L dot dot dot. Okay, cool. Yeah, I think All right. Um, cool. So I'll post these notes. Sorry, I ran over. I'll post these notes and what we will talk about next time. Uh, we'll be looking to complete the docs migration in the next day or two, the Rex, uh, the web server migration in the next really just week, but full fledged two weeks with the destruction. <clears throat> um, and then we have the CI cleanup and then some investigation of Jenkins files as time allows, as well as the archiving of old Debian releases that uh, will let everybody propose some dates around. All right. Um, and with that, we'll call an end to it since we're five minutes over. I appreciate everybody's time and commitment and input and in working on this stuff. <clears throat> Until next time, which will be a month, uh, we can communicate on discourse. Thank Eric, you all. Will I, will I set up for a month um, straight away? Uh, feel free to, and then we can set it up maybe just set it go ahead and set recurring and then we all know this will be when it is good, good. all right thanks